I have always had trouble dating as all my relationships end in utter defeat. As bad as they are though, I'm someone who can't stay single for the life of me. It's a real problem. My first relationship started just after high school. It was one of the tamest breakups too. This girl's name was Tiffany and we'd met each other outside of school and eventually got together. Nothing too bad went on in that relationship except the constant running around she did. She was oblivious to what she was doing and what a relationship really meant. She'd make fun of me for getting jealous, like I wasn't supposed to feel that way for her spending more time with anyone else. I decided to break it off after a few months of this. I couldn't take it anymore. She would constantly rush off and be with other guys and tell me that I'm being controlling when I told her it made me feel like she didn't like me anymore. Once that relationship ended, I didn't date until I was out of high school. I finished up sad and lonely. So after high school, there were a few girls I went through. The first one was after I got kicked out of my parents' house for being 18. I had a girl move in with me to my first apartment and help with bills. We ended up sleeping together and eventually dating. It came on quick and it felt natural. Her name was Mary and she was a very sarcastic person. I lived with her for a long time and really got close to her. She'd constantly pick on me for being sensitive to her jokes. She'd make a joke like she's got other guys lined up ready to take her away and tell other people that I'm small. It was really uncomfortable. She finally said this in front of everyone I know, and everyone she knows, and I got tired of it. I blew up on her at home, and she acted like I was doing something wrong. She got mad at me for defending myself, and when I told her I was tired of her making fun of me and spreading lies about me, she called me a pussy and said I was being too sensitive. I'm sorry if I can't take one insult after another. She moved out of my apartment and I fell into a depression after that. The place started piling up with trash and clothing everywhere. I stopped really taking care of myself and things just got really bad. I talked to a friend for therapy and somehow got over myself and got back to near normal. He even helped me come over and clean my nasty place. I started getting desperate a little bit later, and I heard about a dating app called Tinder. Tinder felt like a golden opportunity to get a real date with no strings attached. Maybe it would have been if I knew what to look for. I was stupid and would take anyone. I got on the app and I found a girl that I liked. She was cool and she wanted me to meet up with her after talking for a few days. So for all I knew, she could have been a crazy person, but I didn't care or so much as think about that. I made plans with her to meet up at a local bar. She was absolutely late and made me wait around the bar for an hour before she showed up. I didn't mind that at the time, but she did this all the time. I dated this one which I forgot about her name for about six months. She was cute and great to be around, but I couldn't handle her being late all the time and the problems that caused, or just standing me up altogether because something else was more important than the plans we had. She could have at least told me that she was standing me up all the time. But instead, I'd sit there long enough to know that she wasn't just going to be late. She wouldn't be coming at all. I'd had enough of that, and I got back on Tinder. I decided I'd give it back to her and not even tell her that I was breaking up with her. She'd find out when I didn't talk to her anymore. I believe that was pretty fitting given the situation. The next Tinder date messaged me and asked me out. She was actually everything I was looking for in a girl. She wasn't mean and abusive. She did exactly what she said she was going to do. And she didn't have plans to ruin me. She had her own place and was renting for another year before her agreement was up. We'd seen each other for about a year before we started having problems, and it was because she started getting distant. I found out why though, 
because she had told one of my friends through Facebook that she only loved me for what I was going to have later on. I was completely broken when I saw this. Basically, her plan was that she was going to get with me, and then when my parents died and I get my inheritance, she'd be rich. I don't know how she found out that I even had that coming, which I don't want that time to ever come, but what she didn't know was I wasn't going to be getting much of anything. My parents were humble people in what they had, and didn't have super high paying jobs, hence why they kicked me out at 18. I heard all the time that I was a lazy 16 year old who didn't have a job to help support. This isn't what that story is though. So I showed her the messages I had from her, and told her if she was going to be looking to get rich off me, she'd be sadly mistaken. She disappeared shortly after that and stopped talking to me. She blocked me on social media and that was that pretty much. I still see her from time to time around and she still gives me dirty looks like I did something wrong. The next girl I dated from Tinder was someone who decided her only personality was whatever anime she'd watched the day before. I thought it was cool that she watched anime as well but even three weeks of this got really tiring. She'd always pick the most annoying character to imitate. As if that wasn't enough, she made me really uncomfortable because she would act like a third her age and make some really fucked up jokes about it. Needless to say, she didn't work out at all. The last and final girl I dated pushed her way in. Tinder really fucked this one up matching us up. So as soon as I messaged her a few weeks after meeting her, she was in distress, or what she made it seem like. She told me that her ex had kicked her out, and she needed to get off the streets. Red flag number one should have been when I picked her up. She came out of the house with her bags already packed, after hearing yelling inside. I didn't put two and two together and figure this out. The stress of helping someone out got to me and clouded my judgment. I didn't even think to say anything when she put her kid in the car. I drove her back to my house and she immediately made herself right at home. In the coming months she never got a job. Her kid was allowed to do whatever he wanted and destroy the house, and the bills started piling up. She just sat on her ass and ate. I asked her many times to get out and get a job, and she refused saying that she couldn't. I asked her one day to leave and she wouldn't. At this point, I wasn't with her anymore, but for some reason, she didn't believe that I didn't want to be with her anymore. I tried my best to keep the peace, but she would always make up something out of thin air to bitch at me about. No wonder her ex was kicking her out when I met her. I had to borrow money from a friend to get her out because I was told I had to evict her. After she was finally gone, I was more broken than I'd ever been. My parents were more oddly supportive as they had never really been before now. They told me that if I wanted to come back and live with them that I could. I decided not to. I wasn't going to put myself in the position of potentially getting kicked out yet again. I have been alone ever since. I brought a dude into the house to help me pay bills and get ahead, but we have a rule that as long as we're living there together, we won't be bringing girls home. Tinder is now off the table for me forever. I'll deal with the crazies around my area that I find in real life, not the ones I find on a website that are potentially even more crazy. I dated a guy from a website you probably heard of, but not for this reason. Craigslist used to have a single section where you could find some gutter hog to sleep with for the night, but it turned out that's kind of what I was looking for. Hello, fellow degenerate here, and I was not looking for a relationship. I met up with a guy whose name was Ben. He was around my age, and even though we had gotten together for a single night, never to see each other again, he made numerous attempts to wow me throughout the evening. 
I never thought something like this could happen, but he was a totally cool person and tried to get me to go to dinner afterwards. I really didn't want to, but I did anyways not to be rude. I ended up having a great time with him though. I saw him several more times for basically the same thing. An evening at a hotel, and then a restaurant afterwards. We started hanging out more, and eventually, he asked me if I enjoyed my time with him. I told him honestly that it had been fun, and I wish it wouldn't end. We ended up dating. Not the best love story in the world, I know. This is more of what really happens. Most of the time, it just happens at parties in high school or college. I hated my home life, so any way out of it was fine with me. Ben had a house all to himself. He told me to move in right away if I wanted to. That's what I did. I got out of my parents' house and went right into his. If you're wondering, yes, this was a huge mistake that I regret to this day. I can't take it back, but I could definitely learn from it, and I have. This would be my last internet date. Don't worry, I'm still alive. When I moved in, this man changed completely. It started with something as harmless as telling me not to touch certain things in the house, but eventually grew into not letting me do really anything at all. He was very possessive of everything. I didn't mind it being a new person in the house and all. He'd built a life in this house, and who was I to change anything? He began setting rules out for me, like letting him know when I left or came home. I was okay with that because he was kind of paranoid that someone was going to come into the house that shouldn't be in there. But he went about this a little poorly. He told me that he didn't have any enemies, and I always thought that he was going overboard with this, but I respected it. In the end, he just wanted to control everything. It wasn't about safety. He also didn't have anyone that came over either. Most days, I'd sit in the living room and just kind of watch TV or play on a crappy computer that wasn't mine. I'd be left alone in the house most times because he'd sit in the back room doing whatever it is he was doing at the time and didn't want to be disturbed. I found that kind of unattractive, but I couldn't exactly leave either. If I disturbed him to tell him I was leaving, He'd get mad and yell at me that I was ruining his work. If I left without telling him, he'd call me non-stop until I answered, and he'd lock me out of the house if I got back too late. I didn't know what happened to the really cool guy I fell in love with. He seemed more like an angry dad than a boyfriend. I never wanted to live this way. I just didn't think about leaving just yet. It was either live here, basically alone, never leaving, or go home to my awful parents. They were abusive and horrible people. This was the best alternative for me at the time. So one day I didn't care anymore and I wanted to go out with a friend to her party. I didn't tell Ben because he didn't want to be disturbed, and I was gone all day and most of the night. He wasn't spending time with me anyways, so what was the problem? Well, when I came back, he had a problem. He told me I shouldn't be coming in that late, and started to beat on me. When he finally got finished throwing a fit, he expected me to lay down in the same bed with him and sleep soundly like nothing ever happened. I'd gone from being in love with him, to absolutely afraid of him. I wanted to leave and go anywhere else. That morning when he locked himself in his back room, I did. I took off with the small amount of stuff that I had and went back to my parents' house. They didn't let me back in. My dad was glad that I'd left and made me feel like I was the reason why he was so abusive and mom was no different. So I guess I became homeless at that moment. I called up a friend that I had nearby and had her come get me so I could move in with her. Dad really didn't go over well. I don't mean she didn't let me. She was angry at me that I waited so long to make a decision to move into a safe place. Okay, maybe not my best moment, 
I understand. So once I moved in with her, Ben came around looking for me. He told me that I'd better get in the car and go back home with him or he was going to burn the house down. We called the police because my friend had him on film yelling that at me from his car. The video quality on her dinky little cell phone at the time was really bad, but the audio caught it quite nicely. Ben never came back after that though. We gave the evidence to the cops, but I think this is what happened. Ben came and made a threat to burn the house down and never followed through on it. Meanwhile, the cops took the recording in for evidence and threw it in the back room because they didn't want to deal with it. it sounds likely to happen that way. I never saw Ben again, and hopefully I don't still. It's been a long time and I've pretty much forgotten what he even looks like. Maybe that's for the best. I found myself a boyfriend later on, and we're still dating, but I don't plan to move in with him anytime soon. Trust me, I've learned not to be stupid anymore like that. The last thing I want is another evil overlord that tells me even when to breathe. I'm a dude, and back in high school, I dated a very stupid girl that went completely crazy on me. I met her at one of the teenager hangout spots, and her name was Lauren. This girl was a bit scatterbrained, and I believe it was intentional on her part. She didn't want to look like a nerd knowing things and shit. She even told me it's not attractive for her to look smart to other people. Okay, whatever, girl. I was sort of pressured into dating her, and she was me. Our friend group ran on peer pressure, and it didn't result in a lot of good things happening. So Lauren and I dated for about three weeks, and in that time, we weren't really close. We were hardly even friends. She and a few others came over to my house to hang out and just be stupid teenagers. This is where things began. The day they all came over, she created a problem and got all sobby and sulky about it. Really, everyone agreed that what happened was her fault. I don't even remember what that was all about. Her first thought was to take a little safety pin and scratch her legs lightly to gain attention from everyone. I guess she thought we'd care that she was doing that. Well, one of her cucks did. A guy we called Space ran right over to comfort her. That night, she stayed over with us, and her little cringy vampire obsession came out. She wanted everyone to believe that her fangs hadn't grown in yet, and she needed a bite to make that happen. She bit almost everyone that night. She ended up biting our friend Jamie, who told Lauren multiple times not to bite her, and ended up slapping her so hard, her feet came off the ground, and she did a 900. I exaggerate, but Tony Hawk eat your heart out. There was air in a twist. She tried to get sympathy from all of us, but none of us gave her any. She ended up sulking again and scratching light lines into her legs. Later on the next morning when I was asleep, she figured that she was too pretty for anyone to be mad at her, and she did things with two of us. Me not being one of them. I absolutely did not mind that I wasn't one of them, and I wasn't mad at the guys receiving. When I woke up, I told him that he could have her, and that's when she turned on me. After they all left, she got to work on the lies that she would later on ruin my friendships with. She told all of my friends that I hit her. The ones that didn't care to hear that, she told them that I said things about them that I didn't, and I would never say. I lost a lot of friends in a little bit of time since most of them were cucks and would believe her over me. Whatever. If they were going to be that way, I didn't need them as friends. I'm not really into the concept of frenemies. So she stalked me for a little while after that, watching closely to what I did and where I went. She'd have people spy on me and tell her what I was doing. 
one day at a hangout spot that I frequently went to with friends that I still had. Old friends of mine tried to jump me. They waited until I was mostly alone to try, but the friends that I had with me backed me up and it just became a fight. I found out later on that it was started by her rallying them up and having them try to go after me. She even tried to attack me, but ended up failing because at that point, everyone was already tired of her shit and had mostly grown apart. Feeling pissed off at most everyone but one or two people, I started staying home where it was safe. On very rare occasions, someone would pull me out of the house, but only to go out for a few hours and then go back home. It's great to be a gamer in times like that. Well, after high school ended, I continued this trend of staying home and just being by myself most of the time. I stopped even hanging out with a few friends that I had left because I found myself a job and still stayed home most of the time playing video games. I met a few people along the way, but for the most part, I'm still mostly a recluse. This started about 10 years ago when I was still in high school. While the bulk of it didn't happen until years later, I met the man that would try to ruin my life and run it as if I were a trophy. I met Frankie in the ninth grade. We didn't have a whole lot to do with one another then, but we were part of the same friend group. There were many of us, and so it wouldn't have been long until we at least met each other. He was really sweet when we finally did meet, but there was definitely something off about him. I figured that he was high most of the time, and that's what gave him his absent-minded demeanor. Skipping all the way through high school, I graduated, got myself a decent job to help my parents pay bills, and I got settled into a pretty comfortable routine. I thought about going to college, but even more so, I wanted a boyfriend. After high school, most of the friends that I knew scattered like I'm sure a lot of people experience. I didn't have anyone around anymore aside from the few people I saw here and there. Well, one day I decided to go see an old friend and have a small drink with her. She had Frankie over as well. I'd been around him on occasion since high school, but this would be our first real interaction alone. My friend had already gotten a little drunk and soon passed out. Night fell as Frankie and I sat there and talked, having more and more drinks together. I fell for him that night, probably because of the drinks that we had. Later on, I started hanging out with him a little more on my days off. I felt like he could probably be my first real relationship, and I was thrilled when he asked me out. I accepted, and we became a couple. Everything was great at the beginning. He was a boyfriend I could be proud of. I introduced him to my parents shortly after, and they did like him. We went out to things together, and hung out to drink and watch movies together. I'd even talk to him at work when I had a chance and nobody was looking. You could definitely say that I found my match. I moved in with Frankie in that time. I dated Frankie around three months before he finally said something absolutely confusing to someone else about me. Someone had said something nice about me, and he told them that I was a bitch when nobody was around. That stuck in my head for a little while, as it was pretty much a knife that he had stuck me with. It hurt a lot. I opted out of asking him why he said that, because I didn't want to prove his point that I was a bitch when nobody was looking. I had no clue what he meant by that, because I was always nice and cheerful around him. I thought it might have been a bad joke that had gone wrong. Maybe he fucked up the joke and felt too embarrassed that it came out the wrong way. I was too afraid to ask about it, so I let it go. Later on, he'd made more snide comments about me to other people, confirming that it was in fact not a joke and he actually meant it. He started to become more toxic to me then as well. 
At the time, I still believed we loved each other, and was caught off guard by him bringing up a problem to me. I'd done nothing wrong that I knew of, and he started blaming me for things. In my head, I thought genuinely that I'd caused something to go wrong, and he made me apologize for it. He was pretty good at shifting blame to me, and making me think that I actually did cause whatever it was that went wrong at the time. A few times of that happening, and I started to get scared that I was going to ruin something again at any moment, and disappoint him. One time I'd said something to someone online that I thought was perfectly innocent, and it got back to him. It really wasn't even about him, but he said he felt the effects of it. It made me show him my phone and text to help him explain to me how it was my fault. All that time, it was his attitude getting him into trouble, and he was extremely skilled at shifting blame. I don't mean to say that twice, but this man was very intelligent in that way. Once he'd established that I couldn't be trusted not to be supervised, he started in on my friends. I only had a few friends that I would see on occasions, as I said. He started trying to tell them what to do. I don't know what exactly he was trying to accomplish, but he'd always interject aggressively and tell them how to do things his way, and if they didn't do it his way, he'd call them stupid for not listening. None of them would put up with that, and so he basically ran them off. He isolated me to the point where I had nobody, and I was only alone with him, feeding me toxicity. He even made me quit my job to stay home while he worked. He said that he didn't want me going out anywhere because I'd screw something up and it would sidetrack him. I really did believe that I was causing him so much grief. When you're put in that situation and demeaned for that long, it's easy to slip into that mindset. When you're mentally healthy, you really can't see how it's possible for someone to get like that until it's too late. I understand fully how someone would have a question, such as how I got into believing that I was the cause of so many bad things happening to him. The answer is that it's way too complicated to follow a direct path to understanding it over a long period of time. So I lived like this for nearly two years, and finally someone woke me up to it. My friend said that it was pissing her off that I was in a situation like this and she cussed me out for it. It wasn't at all nice what she said, but she woke me up, and I don't at all think she made a bad decision. A few days later, I realized everything he was doing to me, and I realized how depressed and shitty I was feeling. I left and went to my parents' house. I really didn't think he would come after me, but he in fact did. When he finally found out where I was somehow, he showed up there and demanded that I get in the car and go home with him. Having no way else around it that I could see, I had to go back with him. My parents weren't home at the time, and so they couldn't help. When we got back, he locked me in the bedroom for a day and told me it was for my protection. What he didn't know was that when he left for work, I'd smash the window and crawl out. I had a family member that lived in another state. I went ahead and smashed the window, left him a really fucked up note, and walked away from the house to go find some place where I could log into Facebook and tell them I was coming down. That's not exactly how it went, but I made it down there. My girl made the trip up to the state where I was at, but in the meantime... I kind of homeless my way around the area for two days. I told my parents later on what happened while they were gone, and they were absolutely livid. They came down to where I was to see me and make sure that I was alright, but I had to talk Dad down from going and paying Frankie a final visit. They had no idea what was going on in the time span I was dating Frankie, and thought he was a pretty normal, healthy person but they were shocked to find out otherwise. I told them I was staying down in that state, 
and I might move back a few years later. But I was finally away from him, and I needed him to move on and fade away from me. More importantly, I needed to recover mentally from what I'd gone through, and I had to do it with the fear that he'd come after me again. It's been a bumpy road since then, but I feel a lot better now than I did. I haven't moved back yet, but we'll just have to see what happens. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind you?